Well, Pastor Ed, welcome to the grass. Welcome to the hill. Welcome. What are we calling this? Church in the lot. Welcome to the grass. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Brandon. Um, hey, I, I know he already shouted out, but can we just honor everyone that rallied together to do anything to pull this off this morning? Can we honor those people? Production, worship, logistics, um, generators, buying gas, sending youth students to go buy bottles of water, um, you know, kids men pulling, pulling that stuff off. I mean, every single person, I'm really so honored to be part of this community. And uh, it really is not about the building. It's not about being inside the building. It's not about uh, the air conditioning. It's not about <clears throat> the lights. It's not about uh, how many speakers we have. It's not about uh, do, we, you know, do we have a full drum kit or not. Like, there's something about when the church gathers, that the church is people, that the church is a, a group of believers coming together. I love the giving verse Brandon just shared. Like, that is it. That is this that believers come together, organize together under heaven, under heaven's power, and we just believe in faith that wherever we are, God is. Because when Jesus came and Jesus died, his death on the cross, we know, I'll talk about this another in a second, we know that there was a, a moment where it says the veil was torn. And in that moment, the symbolism there is that God's presence left being located at a singular place at the temple and now God's presence is wherever we are and that the Bible says that you are God's temple and that God lives in you and that you are a holy temple and so wherever you go wherever you place your foot God is present in that place and so this is just kind of a little outworking of that and so maybe God said you need all y'all need a reminder today that it's not about being in the building and it's not about all the you know, things that we have but it's about me um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to be here today. Uh, I'm a little annoyed with the power company, but that's another issue. I'm going to work, you know, work with God on my feelings about that, um, but it's okay. You know, sometimes things don't go as planned, right? Sometimes our lives don't go how we want them to go, and we end up off track, and we end up preaching in a parking lot instead of preaching on a stage, right? Anyone see the power go out in Paris this week? Uh, at the Olympics and the power was out for like 10 minutes or so all across the city but the church up on the hill Sacre Coeur was all lit up and people are looking at it saying man there's something some symbolism there that even when things don't go as planned and the lights go out the church can still shine even when the lights go out the church can still be who we're called to be because we're not dependent on man's power but we got supernatural power that gives us what we need and so we can be light in the darkness amen, amen. Psalm 84, this is where we're going to be today. I'm only going to talk for a few minutes, and we're going to sing a few more songs, and man, I'm going to bless you on your way on uh, this beautiful Sunday. If you need to move because of the heat, what did Brandon call it? Do whatever you want Sunday? That's it. Do whatever you want Sunday. Uh, so if you need to move, just do whatever you got to do. We're going to be in Psalm 84 today. It says, this is in my, in my Bible here, it says, written by the sons of Korah. The sons of Korah were literal descendants of a man named Korah as you might guess by the name, sons of Korah. Uh, Korah was a cousin of Moses, right? And so these were Levites. The Levite people uh, had a lot of responsibility within running church, doing ministry. Many of the sons of Korah were responsible for worship. They were responsible for praise. This psalm is written as a praise psalm. They also were the doorkeepers in the church. And so these were our greeters. These were uh, the people making logistics happen. So they ran double duty. And I think there's something to be said about there's just as much uh, power from heaven that comes with being a doorkeeper in the house than being someone that's leading the worship in the house. And so there's power in all ways, all parts of the church in making this happen. So the sons of Korah, they did it all. And they wrote this psalm. It says, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and a swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. It says, blessed, and then in verse 5, this is where we're going to live just for a few minutes here. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. 
talking about God's people. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Pilgrimage was a once a year journey that many believers would make to the city of Jerusalem once a year. And they would go to Solomon's temple. That's where the Ark of the Covenant was. The Ark of the Covenant was believed to house God's presence. And so once a year, they would come to this place to experience God's presence. And I almost wonder if God let me hear for this verse today. Because when Jesus came, as I just kind of said, he abolished the need for the pilgrimage. Because there was no longer a need for everybody to descend on one place to experience the presence of God. When Jesus died, the veil was torn. And so now God's presence is everywhere. And so this idea that we're now on pilgrimage, many scholars would say, well, we're not on pilgrimage to uh, experience a singular location of God's presence on earth because his presence is everywhere. But every single one of us, we are on a temporary journey here on earth as we make our way towards heaven. Earth is not our home. Yeah. Where we're at right now is not our home. We are on a pilgrimage ultimately towards heaven. But I also believe that it's our responsibility to bring heaven here while we are on earth. And so whose strength, whose strength is in him, that is us. Whose hearts are set on pilgrimage, I just wanted to say this is whose hearts are set on heaven. Whose eyes are set on him. And so we're calling heaven into earth today. And look at this, verse 6. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. And the autumn rains also cover it with pools. And so what do you do when things don't go as planned? What do you do when you have expectations for how your life is going to go, for how a season's going to go, for how a moment's going to go, for how your marriage is going to go, and that does not quite work out the way that you expect it to? The Valley of Baca is translated as the Valley of Weeping. It's meant to reference a real place. This would have been a valley. Uh, to, scholars believe this would have been a dry valley and a dark valley. What do you do when you walk through a dark season, when you can't see one foot in front of you when you're confused on which direction to go? What do you do when you're in a dry season where it feels like no matter what you do with your faith, it feels like your spiritual life is all dried up. You come to church on a Sunday because you love the community or, I mean, you just like being here, you like to worship, whatever. But if you were honest with yourself or honest with people around you, man, it feels like my faith has dried up. It feels like I'm in a season I didn't expect to be here. It feels like I'm walking and passing through the valley Abaka. Well, the sons of Korah give us a few encouragement for this. And I just want to encourage you today. If you find yourself in a place that's dry, if you find your yourself in a place that's dark, look what it says. It says, they make it a place of springs. They make it a place of springs. They make it a place of springs, meaning they got to make the springs themselves. So if you find yourself in a dark place, you find yourself in a dry place, this is saying for those of us that have our hearts towards heaven, we got some power inside of us that even if I'm in a valley, I can make this place a place of springs. How do you make a spring? You got to have to dig a little bit. You're going to have to dig some ditches. You're going to have to dig some trenches. You're going to have to dig down deep to find out what's really there. And some of us just need reminded today that what you got to do is just dig a little bit. Some of you just got to dig a little bit further. You've been digging. You feel like you should have hit water by now, but you got to keep digging just a little bit further because the water is there. And we do know that inside of every single one of us is a living water that if we just dig a little bit further, dig a little bit longer, dig a little, maybe in a, in a separate place, we will ultimately find the spring that is underneath our feet. And so you may feel dark, you may feel dry, but I want to tell someone you got living water inside of you and maybe you just got to dig today production and worship team you all had to dig today to make today happen we weren't supposed to have church today but you got to dig to make it happen we weren't supposed to meet today but we brought out 300 chairs today we weren't supposed to have church but we dig to put out the blankets today we dig to get water today we dig to give away the cafe today we dig to have you know tattoos ready for kids right like we're gonna dig to make sure that we can still have life in this place even if our circumstances say you shouldn't have it so sometimes you just got to dig. You got to dig a trench. They make it a place of springs. And so the, the why do we have the ability to do it? Because Jesus is living on the inside of us. Yeah. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. That word power, I've talked about this before, is the word dynamis. This is where we get the word dynamite. 
which means you got power, dynamite power living on the inside of you, explosive power living on the inside of you. Sometimes when you got to dig a ditch, you need explosive power to break the ground, that you actually need to do something extraordinary, power beyond yourself to dig down deep. So I'm not saying that you have it within your, that it's all up to you. I'm saying it's all up to him inside of you to be able to dig that ditch. And so we just got to put some trust in him, put focus on him and dig some ditches. But you also know what happens when you dig a ditch. I believe when you do what you can do, God does what only he can do. And this verse says, they make it a place of springs and the autumn rains also cover it with pools. Who's bringing the autumn rains? God's bringing the autumn rains. Only God can bring the rain. Rain signifies favor. Rain signifies blessing. And so sometimes the ditches and the, and, the, and the wells that you're digging are just trenches for God to come and fill with water that he's going to bring. So you might be digging looking for the water and you're not finding it. But I believe there's a step of faith that while you're digging, God's getting ready to send the rain on your life to fill the ditch, to fill the well so that you have what you need. I'm going to do what I can do and I'm going to dig the ditch. But God, I'm also going to believe that you're going to do what only you can do and you're going to bring the rain. I can't bring the rain. I can't do it. I can't call it. Some people believe that you can do a rain dance to bring the rain. I don't believe that. And that I believe that God is the only one that can bring that favor on our lives. So and the, ultimately, if we go back to the first line in verse 6, as they pass through the Valley of Baca, pass through, doesn't mean you're going to live here. Doesn't mean you're going to stay here. We're going to be back in this building hopefully next week. Because I don't know if I want to be out here two weeks in a row. Because we're just passing through the Valley of Baca. I'm not going to live here forever. This is just a season and it's going to pass. But while I'm here, I'm going to dig the ditch. And while I'm here, I'm going to believe for the rain and God's going to still show up and meet me. Can someone give God some praise that even if you're in a dry season, a dark season, we're going to dig some ditches today believe that God can bring the rain. Some of you are going to find the water underneath your feet and some of you are going to get drenched today and some of you are going to get both. And we're going to pray that we're going to receive God's favor from every direction he bring, wants to bring in. Yeah. The rain that's underneath our feet and the rain that's going to fall from heaven. Van, you guys can make your way back up. And ultimately, this leads us to verse 7, Psalm 84. It says, because of that, we pass through the valley. We don't live in the valley. We don't stay in the valley. We pass through the valley. It might be dark, but we're going to have the light we need. It might be dry, but we're going to have the water that we need. We pass through the valley. In verse 7, they go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. What's this mean? There's more for you. There's more strength for you. There's more power for you. And so some of you feel like you've been in a dry season for a long time. Some of you feel like you've been in a dark season for a long time. And you've dug a little bit. And you've seen God bring some rain, some favor, some blessing but you're wondering when you're going to actually get to the other side of the valley, when I'm actually going to get out of this, when I'm actually going to pass through. And the promise of God is that for those of us who have our eyes on heaven, we move from strength to strength. We move from power to mount, power, everlasting building strength. And someone today needs to know God has more strength for you. He has more power for you. He has more for you. And so don't stay in the valley. And if you got to dig today, I want to encourage you to figure out where you need to dig. Maybe some of you need to dig by starting to serve next week and figure out how you can help create experiences like this every single Sunday for people to show up. Maybe some ways that you need to dig today is that your first time at church. And the first dig, the first ditch you need to dig is walking over to the first time guest table and saying, listen, I'm giving my life to Jesus today. Maybe the ditch you need to dig is to just not give up on your marriage yet that there's still hope for it, that there's just something you need to still dig there because there's still water there and there's still life there. And you can believe that rain can still fall on that marriage. Maybe the ditch you need to dig is around your health and you've all but given up and believe that this is the lot you've been given and you are in the valley. But man, is there a ditch you can dig there? Is there autumn rains you can believe are going to fall there? Maybe it's over your job. And you feel like, man, you're just at a dead-end job and there is no hope for you in this place. But are there some ditches you can dig there to find some new life and some new, uh, new power, new strength in that place? I don't know what ditch digging looks to you. 
but I feel like I see a group of ditch diggers right now. I feel like I see a group of people that don't want to stay where they're at, and I might be in a dry season, a dark season, a valley, but I'm going to pass through it, and I'm going to move from strength to strength. That's where we want to be. That's what we're called to do. That's the people of God who have their eyes on heaven. And for those of you that are here for the first time, and maybe you've never fully put your trust in Jesus, I'm going to give you an opportunity today to say the first ditch you are going to dig, the first step of faith you're going to do, the first time you're putting the shovel in the ground is say, today I'm digging a ditch to decide that I'm putting my faith in Jesus. I'm no longer going to try and do life my own way, go my own path, my own purposes, but today I'm going to do what I can do and let God bring the rain over my life to let me pass through this season. I've been in the darkness. I've been in the dry place. I've been trying to do life my own way, but now I'm ready to head out of this place. I'm ready to head towards strength. I'm ready to head towards Zion. If that's you today, I want to give an opportunity for people to put their trust in Jesus today. We're not closing our eyes. We're not doing anything. I would just want to create an opportunity for someone to say, yeah, today I'm putting my strength in you today. Today I'm putting my, my strength in God today. And I'm tired of walking through the valley. I'm ready to pass through it and put my strength and trust in him. So I don't, I don't know if you're here today. You know what God's been speaking to you. You were meant to experience church in the lot today. And so if that's anybody here, I want to give an opportunity to do that. I'm going to count to three. I just want you to slip your hand in the air. Come on, one, two, three. Anybody around need to make that decision? I see that hand. Anybody else need to make a decision? I see that hand. Anybody else need to make that decision today? Come on, don't let this moment pass by. Hey, everybody, we're going to pray this out loud together for the people making this decision. Say, dear Jesus, today I put my trust in you. I'm ready to dig. I'm ready to find water, but would you bring the rain? You're my king, you're my God, you're my savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we celebrate the people that made that decision today, church? This is why we do church in the lot. This is why we don't cancel church. This is why we show up and dig ditches even when we're in a dry and dark place. Come on, stand to your feet. We're going to worship today. If you made that decision, we got a resource available over by the light pole, over by the red SUV that you got to go to. So you can get that today. We're going to worship a little bit, and then we're going to go out praising and bless you into your week. So come on, let's call heaven into this place today, into this lot today, with our eyes fixed on him. In Jesus' name, come on.